and greetings to you in the name of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Today we will uh, continue to look at uh, Moses and the people of uh, Israel. Now when I study uh, Moses, it's very interesting and really encouraging. Now you must have uh, noticed that it was not uh, easy on leading the people of uh, Israel. They've been uh, seeing how they were rebellious, how they were constantly uh, complaining and uh, grumbling. But another thing that we notice, whenever they faced uh, challenges, now, they went up to Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt? Why did you bring us out of Egypt? If you turn with me to uh, Exodus chapter 2. Exodus uh, chapter 2, verse uh, 23. I read for you. During that long period, the king of Egypt died. The Israelites groaned in their slavery and cried out, and their cry for help because of their slavery went up to God. God heard their groaning and he remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. So this, the people of Israel, they were made slaves, they were oppressed, and so they cried out to God, they cried out to God, asking God to uh, save them from uh, their suffering. And in uh, chapter 3, verse uh, 7, the Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So it was not something that uh, out of a uh, Sudden, suddenly God remembered the covenant that he made, he had made with uh, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. But as we read, the people of Israel, they cried out to God. They cried for freedom. They cried that they would, would some, that God will send someone and now uh, save them from uh, their slavery, their suffering. And so we read in uh, chapter 2 and chapter 3, God heard, God saw the misery of the people of Israel. And so, so God called uh, Moses. As I've uh, shared with you, uh, Moses on his own, he also tried to be uh, the saviour, but he failed. And then he ran, and after 40 years, God brought him back into Egypt to lead the people of Israel out of uh, Egypt. Now we turn with me to uh, Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14, uh, verse uh, 11. Now, this is in the context of crossing the Red Sea. We have uh, seen uh, this in one of the uh, uh, sharing. Now, I'll read for you verse 11. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? He said, now, the Red Sea was in front, 
and then the pharaoh and the soldiers were behind and now they started to grumble and complain and uh, what was their complaint they said i read for you again was it because there were no graves in egypt that you brought us here brought us to the desert to die was uh, job didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone, or let us serve the Egyptians? It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. I read for you earlier from chapter 2 and chapter 3. They cried out to God because then they were in misery. And now they had been uh, delivered. And now they were journeying through the, to the promised land. And now they are, they are faced with one major problem, the Red Sea. And now they say, why did you bring us up? Now we would have just stayed on in Egypt. Now we would have just stayed on as slaves. At least there were graves for us to be buried. And it's not the first time they uh, complained. Verse uh, 16, uh, chapter 16, verse uh, 2. In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. They cried out to God. Now God had saved them. Instead of being uh, grateful to God, instead of putting their trust in God, instead of uh, looking towards the promised land that God has promised them, a land flowing with milk and honey, instead of uh, focusing on uh, Canaan where they will rest from all the sufferings that they had uh, suffered while they were slaves in Egypt. Now, they started to grumble. They said, uh, If only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt, there we sat around pots of meat and ate, and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into, the, into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. What were they doing? Instead of uh, looking towards the promised land, they were looking back. They turned their mind uh, towards uh, from the promised land back to Egypt. They said, even though we were being oppressed. Even though we were slaves, there were, when we died, there were graves for us to be buried. Now, even though we were being oppressed, even though we did not have the, uh, the freedom, we had uh, food on our table. Now, why did you bring us up? And again, we see in that numbers, Numbers 14, uh, 3. Now, yesterday we uh, looked at it. They were at the border. And uh, verse uh, 3. Yeah. Why is the Lord bringing us to this land only to let us fall by the sword? Our wives and children will be taken as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? And they said to each other, we should choose a leader and go back to Egypt. We should choose a leader and go back to Egypt. Now today, uh, as, I, as you look at uh, this, uh, whenever, uh, whenever I look at these uh, uh, passages, now, of course, here we are looking at uh, the, uh, the Israelites. Who had been who had cried out to God, and then that uh, God saved them, 
and uh, he was uh, going before them. But every time when they when they face challenges, difficulties, they said, "Let us go back. Let us go back." Not to spiritualize the whole thing. Uh, many Christians are like that. Now we 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 may, you may have come across uh, Christians uh, who would have been very very excited, very very excited when they first uh, met the Lord, and uh, they would give test they come up and give testimonies how the Lord had touched them. How the Lord had uh, delivered them from their sinful ways. How they are now experiencing the joy, the peace of our Christ as a result of being saved. Then, uh, after some years, you don't see them in our church. Then we start wondering uh, what has happened. They've gone back to their old uh, lifestyle. Not all. There are those uh, after experiencing uh, Christ in their life, they make a right about turn. And they say, I am not going back. Uh, I am not going back. I will not get involved in anything that has kept me in bondage. So they will make a right about her and say, I'm cutting off. I'm being crucified. I have died to my sins. And I am a new creation. So for them, everything is Jesus. Nice uh, Tamil lyric. Christ is all to me. Jesus Christ is all to me. Now for them, uh, it does not matter how many obstacles, how many challenges. For them, Christ. I know my Lord, my Jesus will carry me through. I remember a Sunday school song. It says, Jesus is my wonderful Savior. He will carry us through. Beautiful song. The, the promise, so they, 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 they tell you, I, I'm not worried. I may, have, I, I may have to sacrifice everything that I had before. I may have to cut off from, from all my old friends. My life was, there's going to be a drastic change in my life. But for me, Christ is all to me. I will keep pressing on towards the promised land. I'll keep pressing on to where Christ has called me. But then we have uh, also Christians. Who don't make a right about turn, then only turn their head away from their past life. They just turn their head. Now, how long are you going to turn your head? Then, after some time, you turn your head back. And then you see, hey, my past life seems to be so. No, I, 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 I'd rather go back to my past life. My, I don't do let go of my friends. So some people, they cannot make a break. Like the people of Israel, they could not make a clean cut from, their, from Egypt. Every small thing, as I read, they said, let us get a leader who will take us back into Egypt, who will take us back into slavery, who will take us back into oppression. We'd rather be in bondage in Egypt 
than to go through all these challenges. My friend, uh, Christianity is not a bed of, bed of roses, I can tell you. You want to be a Christian, it is not going to be a bed of roses. It can be full of thorns. It can be full of uh, challenges. But uh, as long as you are focused on Christ. Now, in my own life, uh, uh, I can uh, write books on the challenges that I've faced. But what carries me through? Of course, I have a good people who keep encouraging me, who keep saying, Padre, don't worry, we are with you, we are praying for you. I believe that these are people that God has sent. But the thing that keeps me going is the cross of Christ. Because my focus is on Jesus. So I don't worry about anything. I know on the last day, I'll stand before my Savior. On the last day, I want my Lord to look at me and say, Well done, my servant. Come into the rest. I prepared for you. So my focus, yes, I live here on earth. I cannot pretend as though I'm not part of the world. I am in the world, but yet out of the world. Jesus said, He said, they are in the world. We are in the world. But our focus must be on Jesus. If the people of Israel have had their focus on uh, Canaan, their lives would have been much, much, much more easier. In fact, every one of them would have entered into the Promised Land and have, would have enjoyed the fertile land, the peace, the freedom, a land flowing with milk and honey. But because their heart was still in Egypt. Where is your heart? Where is your heart? Now when I, when I repent, I must make a clear cut. I remember while I was, uh, this is many, many years ago, one day, uh, a father came to see me with uh, his son. And he said, uh, Padre, my son has got into a serious problem. Now, I've actually warned uh, the people uh, so many times, don't ever go knocking at the door of our homes. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter if it's $100 or $1,000, don't go and knock at their door. And this boy was in 20s, early 20s. He had uh, borrowed so much of money because he had borrowed from one alone and to pay the first alone, he had take borrowed money from the second alone and uh, then the third alone, fourth alone, fifth alone. So they came and saw me and uh, they said, uh, Padre, we are going to see this problem. So I said, what's the problem? They said, uh, this son of mine, he had borrowed money from uh, our loans. And this is not the first time, they said. The first time, we all came together. My brother, my wife's uh, uh, siblings, they all came, they all chipped in. And then uh, they paid off all the alums and they took all the three, five books, tore it in front of him and said, this ends here. He thought it was all over. But after a year, alums are coming looking for us. We wondered what happened. Then he told that he had borrowed money from them again. So the first time when he was saved by his parents' loved ones, he did not make a clean break. His heart was still with the alums. So he didn't turn around. So after a year, he had gone back to the alums. So as uh, my, child, my uh, call 
to you today is make a clean break from your past. Don't look back. We turn to uh, Genesis uh, chapter 19, verse uh, 17. This is the story of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. It says, uh, uh, verse uh, 17, Plead for your lives. Don't look back and don't stop anywhere in the plane. This is what God, the angel, told Lord and the family. Verse 26. But Lord's wife looked back and she became a pillar of salt. She most she could not see that her property, everything going up in flame. A heart was still in Sodom and Gomorrah. And so she could not experience the deliverance the Lord brought to the Lord and the family. So don't look back. Look forward. Look to Christ. Keep pressing forward the promised land that God has prepared for us. God bless you. In the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit.